Welcome everyone to That Kind of Nerds podcast, a weekly show where we tell you what is going on in the nerdy world. I am CJ Mellon, joined by Brian Thornton. Hello! Uh, Josh Burns, unfortunately, is not joining us this week. He was asked to go be the director of the Flash movie. He got on set, took three looks around, quit, and we'll be back next week. <laughs> oh my god, I got a genuine laugh at it, Brian. Holy shit. Or or he was directing the Han Solo movie and, and, and got ousted from that. Oh, we're going to talk about that, man. I'm that, sure we there's will. There's some good news coming out of it. <sighs> Actually, you know what? That... Are you ready? That is actually our lead topic this week. Woo! I didn't even look at the show notes. At the top of the show, it's actually exactly that. So we want to start off with going on with the world of TV uh, and movies and starting off with Brian's uh, wonderful observation that, uh, listen, there's some bad news, then great news that came out of the Han Solo project, okay? So, Brian, you alluded to the first part. The the directors, right, have dropped out of – the the movie after only I think like five months of filming, and they're citing, and they are citing creative differences with Disney. And they said, "Hey, listen, I know it's cliche, but we actually have two very different ways to go creative about differences with Kathleen Kennedy." Is that what I don't it think is? It has anything to do with Disney? Uh, they were vague in some of the articles that they had. So well, they're vague. Probably because there's so much shit going on behind the scenes. Listen, this is unprecedented. This does not happen. There are plenty of times that directors drop out in pre-production, i.e. Uh, Flash, about three times. There's plenty of pre- people who drop out in post-production because like, they're not, like, not just finding the edit, right? This is in the middle of filming. Here's, here's, here's what actually just happened. It's a real-time follow-up. The, the article that I had initially read said that they left under creative differences. No, and they I got now fired. It was updated that they were fired. Yeah. For having a problem with Lucasfilm's president, uh, Kath, uh, Kathleen they Kennedy. They got fired. So very different story at that point. But, okay, so that's bad, right? Getting fired five months into filming a movie. Uh, Never happens. It, it's Ever extremely happens. rare. Uh, and that's bad news bears. Want to hear the good news that came out of this? I think I know what the good news is. The go next ahead. director you, you go ahead. is Ron motherfucking Howard. Yeah, I'm not as excited as you are. Come on. No, I, I, listen, I'm excited for a Han Solo movie regardless. I think Ron Howard's a great filmmaker. I've just never seen him do a movie like Star Wars. Yeah, but... Give me one movie like this that he's directed. Uh, with, a, like, a fantasy flick? Can't can't give you one, but... I'm, like a sci-fi fantasy action flick. Like, he's more of the drama, like, thought-provoking stuff. And I love Ron Howard's he, movies. Wasn't he an executive producer on that uh, National Geographic series of Going to Mars? I believe he was. It's very and, possible. And, and, and I'm sure you, you kind of... I mean, that is an element of... I didn't direct it, but I mean, like, I, I, listen, listen, this this has nothing to do with with the fact that I don't think he can do sci fi. I think it's just out of his wheelhouse. It's out of his wheelhouse, and I don't know what to expect from a Ron Howard Star Wars movie. I knew what to expect from from the other guys, and I'm my I'm drawing a blank. Who on cares? They got fired. Who gives a crap? Whatever. They're the same guys who did the Lego movie. Yeah, I know what to expect from a, a movie from them in this in this vein. But at I mean, at the same time, I mean, Ron Howard is. A highly respected yeah, director. He's highly respected. He's a he's a giant in the industry. He's I'm been sure a fan of Star Wars be since he was. I mean, for, for he's been a fan of Star Wars forever since it came out. I mean, it's a it's a guy that you want. Listen, I'm okay with him making this his experimental and sci fi release, and and you know it's because Disney was just like, well, this is bad press. Hey, you know how we have like all the money? Like we have like like we have all of it, right? We we have at least. Some of the money. We, right. Apple's got the other side. Disney's got the other. If we were to take all the money and split it in half, half of it would go to Apple. Oh, wait, no. Doesn't Lucasfilm partner with that? Wait, no. So we have all the money. Right. We have all the money. So so yeah. who can we throw at it to make it go, to make this, this bad headline go away? Ron Howard? Okay, that sounds good. What's he doing? Just wearing hats? That's fine. Only, only other person you could have gotten to be better was Steven Spielberg. Uh, yeah, and he's directing Ready Player One, so he's tied up. Um, the Han Solo also movie working on Indiana is, Jones Five. So, well, let's not start by that. Han Solo movie is slated for release May twenty fifth, two thousand eighteen. Uh, yeah, like, listen, there was nothing stopping me from seeing this movie. Like, it's just not going to happen. Uh, and hearing that Ron Howard's not now helming it. Uh, yeah, okay, great. I'm like, you had me at Star Wars. Like, shut up. Like, fine, great. Let's 
So I'll be happy. If you're reading this or listening to this and thinking, Ron Howard, uh, this is not going to be good. You you just you turn away. Go now. I don't want to hear you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Kind of got kind of got worked up at the end, and I, I lost my complete train of thought as to I what see I was that. saying. That that wasn't that wasn't thought out at all. So in the world of of television. And I use television air quotes, Netflix per se. Bill Nye Saves the World uh, premiered this year on Netflix. Did you watch this? I did not. I'd wanted to, but I did not. Okay. I We all agreed. Yet. When I say we all, I mean Brian and I. We agreed that, yay, Bill Nye, awesome. Bill Nye the Science Guy was like the best show when we were kids. It got some bad reviews. It's bad, dude. I don't like it. Really? Yeah. So, like, it's. So, so I should be happy that I, I spent. 12, 13 hours watching Mystery Science Theater 3000. Oh, yeah. You not. you definitely spent okay. the, the better time. Here's the Good. thing. It, it, here, here's what I'll tell you. and Here's my critique of it, my hot take on it. It needs to be longer. The show is way too... You son of a bitch. The show is, <laughs> is way too short. They condense way too much. Is it a half hour? It's a half hour. It should, it should have, be an hour. It should be an hour. And, and here's why it should be an hour. Uh, Bill Nye uh, throughout the show has a panel that comes on, and it's it's usually when you read it, when you read who's going to be on the panel, you see where the conversation, how the conversation can go, and how that's actually a good conversation. It's usually someone for uh, a a a way of thinking, someone for either like global warming or whatever, someone for a topic, someone anti a topic, and then another person who's just an expert who's like he just here are facts, right? And I'm not I don't I'm not going left or right. I'm just saying here are facts. And you kind of see how the conversation evolves. You get to hear all points of view. It just sounds great on paper. Bill Nye is a moderator. When you see it on the show, it's clearly, okay, well, how does Bill feel about this topic? Okay, we're going to obviously edit out anything that is like, oh, let me see the other side. Let me see where they're coming from. And let's just focus on how they're idiots. And that's not right. That's not That's not what Bill Nye taught me as a kid, right? It's listen to no. all sides, make you know, take your education and take what you learned and then apply it to that and then challenge the the other opinion and then you just kind of gain respect at the end of the day. Maybe not go out to change everyone's mind, but know that, hey, at least you know the topic. Um, so I, I don't like it. I don't like the reporting on it either. He has these little reporters. Um, it's it's just it, it's missing. It's it's wow. It's missing that thing that made Bill Nye so great. I, it's missing I, the theme song. No, the theme songs are fine. It still has the bell, 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 bell. But um, it just needs to be better. I'm hoping season two they'll take some feedback and fix it, right? Uh, and and that it'll it will get better. But as a, as it sits right now, I am I am not happy. To, I'm not I'm not happy to hear this. This is not this is not something I thought would go on, especially after Netflix like canceled a whole bunch of shows like since eight and everyone's losing yeah, their mind they went, about it. They, they went all Harry Carey on some of their, their lineup for a little bit. Just Bill Nye just not not diving in enough. I don't think I don't think they, they hit the issues as as well as they could have. So sorry. Well guys. maybe maybe they'll rework the show for next season. Oh God. You know what show needs to go away, die, never come back and then we can all forget about? Planet of the Apps. I know I already shat on it in a previous episode. I went to go Did watch. Did you watch the second episode? I went to go watch another episode just to be like, well, clearly it was like pilot jitters. Like, I'll just give them the fact that. Uh huh. No, it was 10 minutes in. And I still heard the, all right, quiet on the set. I was like, nope, no, 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 no. I'm out. Can't do it. Sorry. Goodbye. Shit, I gotta watch that. It's, you know how like there's bad TV that's so bad that it's good? Yeah. Like Mystery Science Theater, right? You watch a terrible movie and it's so bad you make fun of it and it's good. Right, but that's the whole concept of Mystery Science Theater. The, the, but Planet of the Apps has nothing redeemable for it. Did you watch the newest season of Mystery Science yeah, Theater? As I long did. as we're talking I, about Netflix. Yeah, shows? I did. I watched a few episodes. Oh, so I watched the whole thing. So it was good. so good. So good. So good. Go watch that instead of Bill Nye Saves the World. I'm sorry. I, I know there's someone I, mad I, at I me did. going, CJ, Bill Nye Saves the World is great. Yeah, I, I mean, you're entitled to that opinion, but like, no, it's not. It's not great. Sorry. Nah, I don't think anybody will disagree with you on that. I read a lot of bad things about it, which is why I didn't watch it right now. So. I'll get around to it. And now maybe. it's and now it is time to take a look at the world of comics, how it's affecting movies, how it's affecting TV, but most of but most of all how it's affecting Brian. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Cape Talk. Cape Talk. In the world of Cape Talk, uh, some awesome news came out with HBO and that HBO is going to be making a Watchmen TV series. 
And uh, Damon Lindelof is uh, attached to this. He's the co-creator of Lost. He was also the co-creator of The Leftovers on HBO. He, I mean, there's plenty of stuff. He he wrote Star Trek in the Darkness. Mm-hmm. He did the screenplay for World War Z. Um, he did Tomorrowland, which I highly enjoyed, even though no one else apparently did. I mean, he's done some pretty good stuff. Uh, so he's helming the wa- – all right, so here's my question. Yes. I have – Feelings about Watchmen. You have feelings about Watchmen. I do have feelings. Strong feelings. Right. HBO doing a series. How are your feelings? My feelings are conflicted. Okay. How do you, so ex- explain. 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 My feelings are conflicted because I feel like the Watchmen movie is damn near perfect, is pretty much the page on screen, and I thought it was extremely well done, despite anybody's feelings about Zack Snyder. Um... So for that, I'm like, do we really need this? I don't think we need this. But then on the other side of things, I'm like, well, if I had a 10-episode season and had 10 hours of Watchmen, how awesome would that be? And if I could like get so much more story done and really flesh out these characters, and more importantly, Rorschach, he's awesome. I'd get 10 hours of him. So And I, that makes me happy. So here's my only like thought as to how this could be bad is there was a Watchmen before the Watchmen in the graphic novel, right? Before Rorschach, before all that. When it was the comedian and um, well, uh, was Scarlet was her? Silk Spectre, comedian, uh, a couple other people. You're talking about the Watchmen from I'm the 50s. I'm talking about the Watchmen from the 50s. And this show was, listen, the show's in development, so we know nothing. This is just like, hey, by the way, this is coming, and it's just, yay, get ready. You're worried they're going to spend too I'm much time worried on they're, that? I'm worried they're going to spend, like, hey, let's do the 40s and then the 50s, and then we'll allude to, like, the beginning of the Watchmen from the movie, and then we'll stop. And it's now, go see the Watchmen movie. It's going to be the backstory. And maybe like maybe the backstory and the characters of you know Rorschach and stuff like that. Even though you get a whole lot of it in the movie, like I, I'm worried that it's going to be like a prequel series and it's not going to be attached to the Watchmen movie and it's going to end right where the Watchmen movie picks up. And for those of you playing the home game, I am you can slowly see Ryan's brain going. You know, I could see a studio doing that. I mean, I don't want them to do that because that would kind of ruin the idea that I had. That's not. I don't. Don't do that. No. I. Yes, I I just had all those thoughts run through my head. I don't think HBO would do that. I can see a studio doing that, but I'm sitting here thinking, would HBO do that? And I don't think they would. But here's the thing. If I was going to trust one studio to do it, it's 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 HBO. HBO. Not Netflix, not Stars. it's HBO. I I, I think 90% of what HBO does is gold. They, they have their misses, and that's okay. But I think if anybody's going to do it, it should be them. Right. So, And I think if you're going to try to elongate this story, I mean, listen, that story, just that graphic novel story, is a solid two, three seasons you can get out of that story. Yeah. You absolutely can do at least three seasons of that. And then after that point, because they've done it with Game of Thrones, you can do whatever you want. You can make whatever story you want after that point. And there's some stuff going on in the comic books that might actually help them with that. But I think they're so smart that they could build their own universe and go their own way with it. And I trust them to do that. Bottom, so I'm okay with it. Bottom line comes down to I can I can see them doing it. I, I would be okay because HBO. Anybody else? No. If If we hear later on hey, HBO is not picking up this series and it's going to any other network or streaming service. Bad. HBO, good. No, no middle ground. Is, is that a fair assessment to, to say? Are you, willing to, are you willing to sign on to that? In less caveman speak, sure. <laughs> I just sometimes feel like I want to be a Neanderthal. Sorry. Uh, okay. So, Brian, remember when Batman vs. Superman came out and uh, Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill are doing a lovely interview and someone asked asked the question to Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill, hey, what do you think about the fact that, um, you know, these people, the, the critics are, are really down on your movie, on your shitting film. on your movie. I was just going to say down. The people are shitting on your movie and um, it's not good. And, you know, Henry Cavill seems like it's made for the fans. And then they zoom in. Very slowly on Ben Affleck, and they play Hello, Darkness, my old friend. And we, and thus was born I come to talk to you again. <laughs> the sad Affleck uh, of just because watching a man's face 
just become so just hit with the fact that, oh my God, but I tried so hard. I can't believe I'm hurt this way. I don't know what Henry Cavill's saying right now. I've gone too far into this thought. I should probably listen to what's going on. Within the sound. What did he say? Of silence. And then they cut to him and he goes, yeah, I agree. Well, Kevin Feige is now the internet's newest sad boy, uh, thanks to, well, the fine people over at Sony. So um, Kevin Feige is giving an interview with one of the uh, producers from Sony about, hey, you know, Spider-Man's going to be, uh, you know, some more movies. What, what's happening? Here's the setup. Feige came out a couple weeks ago, and 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 Brian, he kind of clarified the role of Spider-Man. He very movie. much said Spider-Man will not be appearing in any of Sony's side projects. Yeah. And he then, verbatim said that. And then the uh, Spider-Man homecoming producer, Amy Pascal, spoke out and said, well, you know, like, he's going to be in the same, like, universe and, like, the same world. She was like, oh, we're building a universe built on the universe that they've done such a great job of building off of. They're going to be adjuncts to this. And then the reporter goes, so are we going to see Tom Holland show up in, like, Venom? And she's like, it's totally possible. And cut to Kevin Feige, who's sitting there going, uh, this is the, f-, like, he's with his face. He's not actually saying, but he's like, this is the first I've heard of this. What the fuck is going it's, on? It's clear that Kevin Feige's like, what just happened? Like, um, no, I made this world. You don't get a piggyback on this world. I I <laughs> made the comment to you, and I will say it here, that that is not a sad Feige moment. That look she gives her is like, I'm going to cut this person as <laughs> soon as we are off camera. And the poor reporter then at that point goes to like, looks at Kevin and is like, so it, what do you think? You know, and, and she's like, well, anything can happen. And Kevin just like gives his little smile of, yep, I guess this interview is going to end and we're going to have a very awkward conversation in the hallway. Yep, that's right. I highly recommend you go to our show notes, check out the video. It's just a few minutes. It's just great. The look on his face is is priceless. And it really it contradicted everything he just said about Spider-Man and the Marvel he Universe. He said it and somebody else said it. I can't remember who. I want to say the director of Spider-Man Homecoming, who, whose name is escaping me right now, said the same thing. Right. There are no plans to have Tom Holland in any of these side projects or even have Spider-Man show up in any of these side projects. Sony just needs to get out of their way and just say, you know what? Just just take it all. Just hear you know what? We did a great job casting Tom Hardy as Venom. You should you should keep that. Right. But take take everything. Just go. It's this entire this entire deal frustrates me because Marvel's going to do such a great job and Sony is going to screw the pooch. Because as much as I love Venom and I think he can hold a movie on his own, it's going to be difficult to do it without introducing Spider Man in any of it at all. Yep. Or having him be introduced in a Spider Man movie at all. And then their next project is Black and Silver, which is Black Cat and Silver Sable, which sounds interesting as far as like a uh, like spy movie, I would assume. But my point is, like, again, like you're, you're, you're picking two pretty weak characters who have never been able to really hold the spotlight by themselves and not introducing them in like Spider-Man at all. Like it, it's... Uh, Listen, it's it's clearly it's clearly two different studios not on the same page disagreeing about the direction and poor freaking Tom Holland and Spider Man are in the middle and all all of us nerds have to deal with it. So g- go check out the video. You'll see why we're all up in arms about this. But hey, <laughs> welcome to Showbiz and welcome to the fact that Sony should just give back Spider Man. Hooray for Hollywood! Sorry. Uh, so it wouldn't be keep talking if we didn't talk about the DC Extended Universe and if we didn't talk a little bit about Justice League. Uh, some some reports, some news coming out that Joss, Joss Wheaton's, uh is already kind of shaping and making some changes to the, the Justice League movie. Uh, and, and again, we kind of talked about how, oh, we really can't do anything major, just tone and da-da-da. Apparently, we're like half right on this. So there are some bigger reshoots than what people were anticipating that are allegedly happening right now. Yeah, but he co-wrote those reshoots with Zack Snyder. Yeah. Zack Snyder's fingerprint is still on that. And then the other part, too, is they got rid of the composer. So it was Junkie XL, right? And they've now changed it to Danny Elfman. Yeah, smart move. Great move. Guy did Spider-Man score. He did Avengers Age of Ultron. He did Batman. I mean, like, th- that's who you want scoring the movie. So I think less guitar riffing and more, you know, like, traditional scoring. Uh, and and 
apparently the actual tone of the movie is being shifted in these scenes that are being rewritten where it's I, I guess they're trying to to lighten it up. I think they're taking some of the feedback from Wonder Woman. And they're like, let's quickly apply this to to what's happening. So, I mean, do, do you feel like we're still on the path of, hey, you really can't fuck with it too much? It's still a Zack Snyder movie and Joss is just there to, to fix a few things. Or do you think they were like, holy shit, Wonder Woman's so great. Adjust, adjust with what we can. No, I, I think I think Zack Snyder's footprints are still all over this. I I, I think I think you're going to definitely sense his presence in there, but you're going it, to it's definitely I mean, you're going to feel both of their presences in the film. It's going to be a Snyder Whedon production and, and you're going to know it. Like you're going to, you're going to feel, Oh, you know, that's definitely a Zack Snyder shot. That shot of like Aquaman with the tidal wave coming behind him. That's a Zack Snyder shot. Yeah. And then you're going to be able to tell, Oh, that's a Whedon shot. Like that's, that's got him all over it. But I don't think the movie's going to suffer for it. I think the movie is going to flow very nicely. You have two pretty like-minded directors helming this who know the material who co-wrote scenes together. So they both are kind of in agreement. Like this is where we want the movie to go. I think this is, all good news. Here's my question. When when slash if Snyder comes back, right, and and Joss is no longer helming this, do we lose some of that change? Do we just go back to the old DCEU? Do you think Snyder will keep some of the tonal changes that have been happening? No, people I think like? he's going to keep them. I think that's why the, the re- reshoots are happening to begin with. I think that is why we hired Joss Whedon to helm Batman and Adam McKay to helm Nightwing and Matt Reeves to helm bat uh the Batman solo movie. Um I I mean there's there's reasons behind this and I don't really think it has so much to do with Wonder Woman. I definitely think that's a huge influence, but more to do with the fact that hey, we finally know what we want our movies to be. We got a couple of really smart guys and Jeff Johns and I forget the the producer who's co co-coordinator with jeff johns john berg they, you got those two guys saying this is the, the tonal shift that we need to make for our movies for our characters i think it has it's a it's a combination of all those things and when Zack snyder does return to this and picks up the helm for whatever movie he decides to come back with whether it be justice league 2 or if he comes back with a different movie i don't think you're going to lose any of that all right it's also that time of the show where i go ahead and i scour the internet for weird oddities and weird things. And then I want to get Ryan's opinion on it. It's time for the tech perspective. Don't do it. It's not the theme song. What's, what was the R2? You're just tri- now you're just showing off. <laughs> yeah, jerk. So, Brian. So, CJ. You know how we really don't have a whole lot of ads on that kind of nerd anymore? No, we, we do not. I do recall this. And, and part of that is because we have a wonderful Patreon page where people can go and support us directly instead of having to deal with ads, right? Correct. So the most of the internet, though, is filled with ads. So a lot of yes. people have an ad blocker, and it gets rid of them all. But sometimes, Not all of them. But most of them, right? You know what I hate? I hate it when I visit a web page and like a random video starts playing that I can't freaking find. I'm like, where the hell is the sound coming from? Yes. And then you can't find it, so you just mute your speakers. But there was that video that you wanted to watch about the top 10 crazy dresses on the red carpet that year. And you wanted to watch it, but every time you unmute, they're still talking about cars for some reason. And you're like, where the hell is this video? And you can't find it. Are you talking about that? That was oddly specific. I'm just saying. <laughs> Brian's just venting about situation. his Fridays. Well, no, everyone, some people use an ad blocker, right? And it takes away most of the ads. And then uh, the problem is sometimes it leaves like a hole like in the middle of an article and it looks kind of weird. Well, there's an ad blocker that will now replace the ads with affirmations. Like you can do it? Like, you know, almost like the like the, like the the cat with the hang in there kind of thing, you know? Oh, that like, cat's cute. Like, hey, you, you hang in there. <laughs> like, you can do it, buddy. Like, Ice can has cheeseburgers. All right, so the plugin is called uh, Intently. It works on Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, but not for your smartphone because that's not how those operating systems work. Uh, and instead, it's it's uh, little things of like, um, hey, you, you have a great job today. Trees are about to to come to life, and just the like, positive things and nice artwork. Whoa, 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 whoa! Back up. 
You just said trees are about to come to life. That's not an affirmation. That's, that's like a call to war. <laughs> all right. Like I'm if reading. trees are coming to life, they are going to screw I'm, up humankind. I've been doing that thing where I'm trying to make this interesting and read at the same time, and that that doesn't work for me. So there's ones that are like, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win. And it's like the little cheesy posters. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky, Michael Michael Scott. Scott. Uh, right, just full of these little things of like, hey, you want to see the world? Just don't let inhibitions get in your way. And you're just, you know, some of these are a little weird, a little out there. But uh, I think it's great that you can just go ahead and block some of the, the shitty ads, uh, and you can actually go ahead and see something to remind you to, you know, keep your head up, make it happen. Yeah, no, is, we all need, we all need a little positive boost in our lives. Is this something you would ever use? No. Then, if you won't have affirmations, if you could make an ad blocker and it would substitute the ads with a different content, what would it be? I mean, I want to just say awesome pictures of Spider-Man. That's the first thing that (laughs) pops into my head. But then I know I'll just be getting distracted by the awesome pictures of Spider-Man and I'll forget why I was on that website to begin with. Do you remember a few weeks ago we talked about how Google has a tool called uh, Doodles or whatever it was where you you draw a poor, terrible... Yes, horse, and it right? Kind of and then it's free. like, oh, you meant to draw a horse. Here's an awesome horse. You're like, yeah, yeah, I can draw. I want those. I want to see like like someone's drawing of like, oh, I'm going to draw a flower, and it looks terrible, and then it snaps into it, and you have to kind of guess what it is before the ad, you know, shows you what the finished product. Sounds is. like a game show. I want to see a little game instead of ads now. I just want to see like, what do you think this is? I have no idea. Um, it looks like a beaver. It looks like a duck. What about, oh, it's a platypus. What about those like little like trivia things where they like guess what this picture is? It starts out like really blurry, and then as <laughs> right. time goes on, it clears up, and you're like, it's a it's a jackal. No, that it's a it's a lemur. No, it's it's a lion. It's a lion. Why is it a lion? That makes oh, it's a close up of a lion's eye. How the hell am I supposed to get that? I thought it was a tarantula. Like it's. It should be one of those. Or my other thing, this. This is a great ad blocker. You ready for this? Remember the old movie of trivia that used to come up before the movies, right before the, the it previews? It still does, but yeah, that stuff bores me because I know all the answers. So, sorry, did I, did I ruin <laughs> wow. your ad blocker? Damn. Well, I know Brian's not going to be downloading this. Because the movie trivia before the movie starts is just like, hey, guys, in in Beauty and the Beast, what was the... Uh, the yeah, main yeah. character main character's name and you're like um bell and they're and the and the choices are like bell hogarth um like jack lantern and beast and you're like well it's not beast and jack lantern and hogarth are definitely out so it's got to be bell it's easy and it's just like oh my gosh this trivia is brought to you by coca-cola and you're like couldn't coca-cola make some better questions <laughs> Just get a freaking Trivial Pursuit card and put the question up from that. I'm just saying, I think we should turn ads into interactive little games and things like that. And you're right, but the problem is I'd be like trying to read an article, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. Completely, oh. I completely forget why I'm there. Trivia question, trivia question, great, great, great. What's another ad? Is there another ad I can click somewhere? Uh, so, all right, so, all right. But, uh, I, I see I see your point. The way it is right now is I just ignore the ads. I don't care. Uh, or, again, just you know, go to a great website where we have very little ads. Yeah, there you go. So Brian, how how often how often am I right about something? <laughs> You're never right. <laughs> and then and then what happens when the moments when I am right about something? Um, it, it's a it's a conspiracy. Like all like the time. like we just got done talking about House of Cards on Hey Did You See, and I said that spoilers that Claire was going to talk to us right in the camera sometime, and then bam, she she did right, and you were like, damn it. CJ was right. Well, I got to be right again because IKEA is going to be a partner with Apple's AR app and they're going to be able to put furniture in your own home. Oh my God, who saw this coming? I didn't, I, I, don't, I don't see that as you being right. I see that as you saying, you know what would be a cool idea? Meanwhile, people who are much smarter than us had already thought of now, that I've idea. I've been saying this is what AR needs to do. You need to do this for AR for years. I've been saying this is what's going to happen. I don't believe you. Hey, you're just a, just a jerk. The, the first time I heard you say it was on this podcast. <laughs> 
So here's the fun part now that you can go ahead and you can scan a barcode, right? Get a 3D model of IKEA furniture, place it in your house, see if you want to buy it. Then spend nine years painstakingly putting it together with the instructions and having that extra screw that you know is supposed to go somewhere, but you don't know where. And you, you just get, screw that random, just randomly. Just you just, like, this you, would be you a just find a, you just, pay, just you just find a place for it. Yeah. Uh, so you can do that. So here's my question, right? Uh, w- is this something that you would use? Is this? Do you think that if you were to start to buy things that you would want to see how it fits in your house? CJ, as you know, in my palatial estate, much of it is still not furnished yet. Um, because I only spend most of my time in in two rooms of the palatial estate. I don't need the rest of it to be furnished. Uh, if Wait, I were what to, are the, start- what are the two rooms? Living room and my bedroom. What about the Blockbuster? The Blockbuster is banned by the employees. I don't need to be in there. But you don't go to, like, rent movies? No, I have, like, a dumbwaiter. They just drop them down to me. Oh, okay. But then how do you pick a snack? Benoit brings me the snacks. Okay. I say, bring me the Twizzlers. He comes back with red vines. I slap him, and I say, no, Twizzlers. And he goes back, and he gets me Twizzlers. My apologies. Um... So, I mean, since since I supposedly have this palatial estate, I would not cheapen it with Ikea furniture. But if I were to buy a piece of Ikea furniture and have Francisco put it together for me, um, I would definitely want to see what, it's look at, what it looks like in my room beforehand. I think this is a great use for AR, uh, and I will not ever admit that you were right about this. I just think, you know, people had a, the same <laughs> idea before you. Okay. And, and this is a moment, too, also where I'm a little sad that Josh isn't here with us right now because Josh has been clamoring, nay, screaming to the mountaintops. You need to bring some of these legacy old retro games and put them on a mobile device because that's the size of what like some handhelds were before. And now we're, we're at the point where we can go ahead and play games. And I think Sega, out of all companies, has finally listened to him because Sega is launching a retro game collection for the iPhone and Android. And it's free to play, and for $1.99, you turn off the ads. And it's going to have modern features, so you're going to have cloud saves, Bluetooth support, online leaderboards. What do you think about this? We're, we're, we're talking about like the original Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, uh, that was going to be my first question. Altered Beast, Kid Chameleon, uh, Fantasy Star 2, just to name a few of some of the Sega games coming. But Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog, it's there. I mean, though, that's the, those five games you, you mentioned, even though I do own them for my Sega Genesis and I have them here, that would be awesome to play them on the go, you know, when I'm supposed to be working. So it's called Sega Forever. It's launching to both iOS and Android. Is it the number four and then ever? No, no, it's it's the word forever. Sega was least nice to do that. Good, good. Uh, It includes both emulators and ported games uh, from the Sega console era uh, and will adapt selectively based on your mobile device. But it's pretty faithful to the actual game. Is Vector Man in there? I I don't know. They've only announced the first five games, which are the ones that I told you about. And they're going to be adding titles to the collection every two weeks. Ooh. Guess what? It's available what? right now. Right meow. Right meow, listener. Pause your application if you want. So go ahead and, and just make sure you're not driving. Go to your app store and go ahead and find Sega Forever. And I'm curious, Brian, to get your first impressions about this right now on the air. I just go, uh, searched in the app store Sega Forever and I'm getting nothing. So, like, right now, you can go to the App Store and search Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, okay. And Because, I mean, let's face it, that's the game you want to play. So, just so while Brian's downloading, let me, let me clarify. The program that they're doing, the way that they're unleashing this, is under a banner called Sega Forever. But it's individual games hitting the App Stores. Uh, they have the in-app purchases uh, with them, but it is the individual game. So, I, I just downloaded Sonic the Hedgehog. How about you? Uh, I, I just went ahead and downloaded uh, Sonic CD, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Crazy Taxi because it looks like those are the only three things I can find right now. Believe it or not, the Crazy Taxi game has been out for a while. I didn't know Crazy Taxi it's was out. For a while. So, there's so when you launch it, right, there is play for free, which is ad supported, uh, buy ad free versions, which is $1.99. Sega! Sorry. No, that's what you want to hear. Let me decrease the volume here. (laughs) So here's the thing. I went to go ahead and play Sonic right away. I went, all right, give me the ads. I don't care. Let me play for free. You press go, and immediately you get served an ad. I mean, I want to see if that experience is true for you. And Garden Escapes. Right, so this is where I kind of wish you had that ad blocker that would show you the movie trivia or something instead of the actual ads. But what if I need to to 
cultivate an awesome garden. <laughs> Apparently there's lightning and totem poles in this garden. That's awesome. Oh, well, this guy looks way too happy. We're not honestly going to talk about the ad that you're seeing, are So listen, if you've ever played an emulator on a mobile device, the controls are exactly what you think they are. Right? It's a little, it's a little, like, thing it's to grab on the left-hand as, side. Yeah, like, here's what I don't like about these things. Like, I, I need the tactile experience for games like these. Like, I need to press the button, feel the button go thick, and know that I did something. Like, it's... And this I'm is why, and this is why it supports Bluetooth controllers. So if you want to go out and you want to buy a little Bluetooth controller, you can use that on on this, uh-huh. which I think is kind of the way to go. Sure. Is this a step in the right direction? Is this fine as is and we just need to learn to, to deal with it? Like, what, what do you feel? Uh, no, I mean, this is this is great uh, for, you know, especially for kids who never played these games. I really, I would need to get used to the whole touchscreen experience because I don't, I don't like this right now. But I think this is a great way to go ahead and, and kill some time, right? Listen, a dollar ninety nine to get rid of ads. I mean, that's a one time purchase. Like that's that's actually pretty pretty decent. Uh, I would definitely pay that, especially for Sonic. Like I don't want to see ads as I you know die and I, I want to respawn in Sonic or I hit a checkpoint or something. I don't know how, exactly how far it works, but. This is pretty cool, and the fact that they're committed to doing this once a week, giving you uh, some extra games, uh, is 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 pretty awesome. Yeah, so I just week? completed Act One, and now I'm watching an ad. Yeah, if it's after every level, that's going to be a pain. Uh, I mean, a dollar ninety nine, dude. Just get rid of that. For me, it's not worth it. Really? I mean, really, just because I I can't get used to the control scheme. Maybe if I was used to that, I'd be a lot more likely to spend. Two bucks I'm, on it. I'm thinking for this. This is a this is a big company, right? Sega. I know they're not as big as they used to be, but this is a big game, a big game company, Sega, saying, "Listen, every two weeks, we're going to add some of our back catalog onto mobile devices. It's free. If you want to give us a dollar ninety nine, we'll get rid of ads. Otherwise, yeah, it, you know, enjoy some of these terrible ads for other games. Uh, but I think it's a great way to to kind of pick it up. I would probably recommend if this is something you're really interested in buying a bluetooth controller because it supports it and it works but it's cool it's awesome it's on the app store it's free i i I think it's totally worth your time so in the uh the other part of gaming right on our patreon page we gave out our our topics earlier and brian roman had a a question for you brian well for you us collectively but you're the only one with the switch and he says, I'm pretty excited for the Switch right now. Uh, Mario and Metroid are enough to go ahead and push me over the edge, so I don't feel like I'm buying a $300 Zelda tablet. The truth on that one, by the way. I totally feel that way. Did you, Brian, get a chance to play ARMS? Not yet, but I want to. I hear good things. Uh, what is that, for those who don't know, like myself? What is, what is ARMS? It is a, a I, I mean, I, I cannot do it justice by trying to explain it. It is a fighting game from nintendo and you have long spindly arms and that's all i can really tell i you. heard it's like you're you're born with like these springy arms one guy's like a science experiment yeah, that's gone you know wrong. you know um you know dalsim from yeah. um street fighter you're you're pretty much him all the time from what i can tell is it like first person or is it sideways it's it, it's um it's not sideways everything i've seen it, it's uh over the top kind of you can see the back it's not like first person okay but it looks like it's motion activated too. So like your Joy Cons, you would like treat them kind of like the Wii Boxing game. Okay. It looks like a lot of fun. It's definitely something I am interested in in playing. Finally, the final topic in our world of gaming comes down to everyone's favorite augmented reality game that no one plays anymore, Pokemon Go. When Pokemon Go was first announced, right, and we all lost our collective minds. One of the things that they put in their trailer was like like a like a raid battle, right? Where everyone kind of shows up and it's a massive fight, right? It's a yeah, huge. Yeah, they com- showed like a three on three battle of like just friends being like, "Oh, hey, let's battle each other." Like they showed a bunch of stuff. They showed trading, right? Oh, Jesus, I have yet to see any of this shit happen. So they've announced that these uh, these raids are going to be coming in the coming weeks, and they're going to be taking place at existing gyms. Which means you have to like go to a so designated not at Times Square. So not at Times. Well, probably at Times Square. Well, I don't know if there's a gym at Times Square. Uh, it probably is. Uh, well, you'll see a, a, a countdown, right? And then there's four bosses, and then it's just a basic, you know, free for all. But the thing is, you have to like go to a collective meeting place. You can't just like happen to be like, oh, hey, you're here, I'm here. Let's 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 do a battle. There's no peer to peer still. 
There's still no trading. There's there's some extra rare candies and and golden raspberries and you know some dumb stuff like that and some extra items. But my my question is, does this matter at all? Like like who is like would this make you go back to playing Pokemon Go? I will not go back to playing Pokemon Go until there is legit battling and trading. I've said that multiple times. Maybe not on the air, but I'm saying it now. There is no way I'm playing this game until I can actually meet up with my friends and be like, hey, I just caught this level 300 Snorlax. Let's fight. Like, I'm not it. It, it makes me so mad because this is what I was promised a year and a half ago and I still haven't gotten it. Well, you ready for the uh, the other catch to this? You have to have a pass to join a raid. So you'll need to supply one of these like single use passes up front to do a raid and some of them you can buy with in-app purchases so they're restricting participation of this and it can, it's supposed to make it feel special but it's just another way to like just just to get more money out of people so you can get a notification hey there's a raid coming up at a gym near you soon but if you don't have a pass to get into the raid you can buy one here for 499 like <sighs> i should be able to i should be able to earn a pass by like I'm beating I'm sure, certain I'm, things. I'm sure you can, but I mean, like, you only get a like. What I'm saying is, you can't just stay there and do raids all day. Like, you have a finite amount of times you can do this. They're restricting you from doing this all the time. They're trying to avoid the chaos of what was happening in like Central Park after this thing first like launched. <laughs> is that still a problem though? I don't, Are there I don't still think people so. getting together and like? Like, hey, this is I my store and not a pokey stop. Get out of here, you loiterers. Like, that's not a thing. Uh, I don't know. I I am I am so supremely disappointed with what has happened with this game because it had so much promise. It had so much stuff going for it. And now I'm just. <laughs> oh, sad, Brian. I wanted to be the very best. Like no one ever was. Sorry to hear, it, dude. It's not going to happen anymore. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry to break your heart. I didn't mean to do that. You won't, you're not the first. You won't be the last. So there's so much that's going on in the nerdy world that we definitely want to hear from you. So we got a new director here of Star Wars. What do you guys feel about the fact that we're going to have Ron Howard at the helm? Uh, I was pretty rough on Bill Nye, the science guy. If you think I'm real off base in this and that this Netflix show is great, I'd love to hear your opinions on that. Uh, uh, Brian, what do you feel about getting some input on seeing this Watchmen show and, and what's going to happen with HBO? I mean, do you, do you think that people should be concerned about this or is this something everyone should be happy about? I think everybody should be happy. And if you disagree with me, you're more than welcome to voice your opinions, but you're wrong. Uh, I also want to hear what people think about this Sega, uh, this Sega concept here. We can go ahead and download these apps and play them on a phone. Brian and I aren't the best like mobile gamers, so I want to hear people that actually do this every day. I uh, want to hear what you have to say about it. Uh, there is actually two little bits of news uh, that I also do want to cover when it comes to that kind of nerd. The first thing is, the first thing is that we are wrapping up and airing our series finale of Hey Did You See's coverage of House of Cards. Uh, so if you want to know all about season five, go ahead and find Hey Did You See on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play Music, wherever you find your podcast and give us a subscribe there. Uh, also, I'm going to be making an appearance on the uh, podcast Cinemaholics from We Got This Covered. It is with uh, our good friend John Negroni. Uh, he's going to have me on the show to talk about Transformers, uh, how the industry is viewing film critics and some other things that you must be watching on TV or at the movies. So uh, tune in. Uh, if you don't know where to get that, just search uh, Cinemaholics on your favorite podcasting app or go to WeGotThisCovered.com and you'll hear me on the next episode. Uh, I want to thank Brian so much for coming and talking with me this week. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for making us your walk around your neighborhood or your drive to work. And we'll see you next week. As always, this episode is brought to you by you and the wonderful people that are supporting us on Patreon. If you want to be a supporter of That Kind of Nerd, go to patreon.com slash that kind of nerd for some awesome rewards. Thanks again to this month's patron, Brian Roman. If you love comics and sci-fi and technology, television, video games, and fantasy, well, take a listen to our show, I'm sure you'll see. There's many points where we can agree Like that Martha as a plot point was just too absurd And Apple versus Android is a case to be heard 
And that Josh Trank knew Fantastic Four was a turd. Well, welcome to the club, because you were that kind of nerd. I'm a genius. We can all we can all admit that I'm a genius. All right. I have Bane. I've got the tech perspective theme. I've got the Cape Talk theme. I've got funny little colloquialisms. You have words you can't say. Hooray for Hollywood. Sorry. There's a cat hanging out at a fountain with a scuba diver. I'm interested. How many cats? Just one. Is it a big estate? That cat just played fetch. That doesn't happen. Yeah, you would know.